Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm getting straight to the point as this topic turned out to be far more insightful than I thought. Today we are talking about the Celtiberians. The Celtiberians were a big category of people of Celtic origins living in the northwestern part of the Iberian Peninsula, though by the time of the second century many tribes had expanded more inland in the center of Spain. They have a very long history and a very interesting culture of which we know quite a lot about. We cannot talk about the Celtiberians without mentioning the Castro culture, which is the name used by the archaeologists when referring to the ruins and artifacts found specifically in the northwestern region of Spain. The three main characteristics of the Castro culture were the metal artifacts, the fortresses and the big cities, specifically the way they were fortified. Celtiberian history is divided into four stages that I intend to go through with you starting from the origins. The first stage of Celtiberian history starts at the first signs of Castro culture and of Celtic presence in Spain, in the 12th century BC. The first Celtiberians were shepherds, miners and metal workers. They definitely left the mark in the Bronze Age as they often traded around Western Europe all the way to Britain. The constant flux of wealth coming from outside Iberia created a society centered around wealth rather than war or land who ran the Celtiberian settlements was an elite of traders and uh, rich lords. The settlements were few, divided and lacked proper fortification and organization. The main focus to, was to look open to trade rather than safe and fortified. They were placed where the main resources were for the sake of convenience. When the Bronze Age ended on the 9th century, the bronze artifacts from Iberia lost their value and the Celtiberians found themselves isolated after depending on foreign trade for centuries. The second stage is called the formative stage by the archaeologist. This is because we see the Celtiberians trying to adapt not only to the introduction of a new superior metal, but also to their sudden need to protect their settlements. New villages came up in more strategic positions like hills and peninsula, and the first forts were built. The artificial defenses were initially composed of uh, earthen walls, battlements and ditches, which enclosed the areas where the Celtiberians used to live. As Professor Javier Rodriguez Corral puts it, in essence, the main characteristic of this formative period is the assumption by the community of a larger authority at the expense of the elites, reflected in the minor importance of prestige item production. While the collective invested important resources and labor in the communal spaces and defenses. So, in short, less shiny things and more stones stacked together, please, was the Celtiberian mentality until the next stage. The third stage, or like some like to call it, the second Iron Age, hence implying that the formative stage was the first Iron Age, I, I don't know, Wikipedia is confusing, was when the Celtiberians got around their new lifestyle and experienced a boom in population. In the 6th century BC, their settlements grew in number and density, forcing them to develop their fortifications. The final result was the Opida, an Iberian-style Opidium, which is how the Romans called the Celtic fortifications in Gaul. They remind me of the Nurags in many ways. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my video on Nuragic civilizations. You will be surprised on how similar the Celtiberians are with them. 
The last stage involved the Celtiberians expanding south and building more Opidas, but most importantly getting back into trade with the Carthaginians and fighting the Romans. These two new uh, encounters revived the metalworking tradition that only had a minor role in Celtiberian society in the last centuries, and forced them to develop their fortifications even more, making the Celtiberian forts very hard to take down. This new golden age of the Castro culture ended only in the 1st century AD when the Romans conquered all the Celtiberian territory. Most of the Opidas didn't actually get straight up abandoned in favor of the Roman polis, but instead got new uses, mostly as religious buildings, yet many kept on being inhabited until the Suebi arrived in the 5th century AD. Unlike all of the other civilizations we have talked about so far, the Celtiberians never really were integrated into Roman culture, mostly due to their geography of the northern regions, but also because of how long and intricate their culture was. Not to mention the hate the Celtiberians must have had for the Romans, since their very first encounter with them had been when Carthage hired the Celtiberians mercenaries to fight against them in the Punic Wars. In conclusion, the Celtiberians are certainly very interesting. At first I wanted to make us uh, separate videos for different tribes, but I think a big summary about the different stages of the culture they shared is more than enough. If you want to know more about the Celtiberians, be sure to let me know and I will be probably able to get some more content out of them. It has been a while, but I'm glad that most of you stuck around and that more of you are joining the channel. I'm not going to lie, this summer drained me quite a bit. However, my courses are going to start again soon and I'm weirdly excited. I hope that I will still have time to make videos as I find it very gratifying and a very useful hobby for whatever my future has in store for me. Your support, even if it was scattered and seemingly coming out of nowhere, was far from ineffective and I hope to repay you back soon with new content. Now that all my cheese is out of the way, I hope to see you back soon in a brand new video.